Good morning. Thank you all for coming today for our featured car talk. This is kind of our official last featured car talk. Not that we're finishing doing them, but starting next month, we're going to be starting calling them Tread Talks. We're changing our name. So if you see on our Facebook or the emails that Tread Talk, it's the same thing. We're just going to update our name to encompass more than just cars. So, so uh, that'll be moving forward. Uh, today we're honored to have two very special speakers with us. We have Larry Shaw. A lot of you have met Larry over the years. Larry is our oldest volunteer, not only in age, probably, but also in duration. Larry started with the museum before we opened up, uh, helping Drew and later myself uh, doing the research on the vehicles. He's been a part of our research advisory team ever since that time. Volunteers for countless feature car talks, tread talks now, and, and a lot of other different things. So Larry's been an integral part of getting this museum off to a great start and is just a wonderful, wonderful volunteer for our museum. We also have a very special guest speaker today, Justin Engelmeyer. Justin came to us as one of our, our very first junior volunteer. Uh, was it last year, I think, about this time last year that she started with us? Uh, Justin is, uh, let me read this so I don't miss anything here. Uh, he's finishing up his freshman year at Clay Center Community Middle School. Uh, he loves cars. Um, Besides that, he enjoys participating in track, football, and basketball. He became interested in cars when he was 9 or 10, so just about a couple years ago, really. <laughs> when he saw a 1971 Trans Am on a television show, and he instantly fell in love with that car and said, one day I'm going to own a Trans Am. So when he came here for his first visit to the museum and saw our 1979 Trans Am, he thought, man, I need to hang around this place. I really like this. So we got him on board as a junior volunteer. And so uh, Justin's going to share with Larry today all about Trans Am and Firebirds. Let's give them a warm welcome, and I'll turn it over to them. Oh, good, morning, good morning, everybody. Now, I suppose every one of you wonder why we're talking about a Mustang. Well, Mustang was the first pony car, so to speak, and it kind of caught GM with their pants down. Uh, they didn't have anything to match it. And it took them three years before they could come up with something to match it. Well, this is a first, one of their first stabs at it. This is called a Banshee. And uh, Banshee's a pretty cute name until somebody found out that it meant wailing, wailing spirit of death. And <laughs> well, that's not too good either. So anyhow, in February of 1967, we started out with the Firebird. Now, I have the distinction of being one of two people first to drive a Firebird in Manhattan. I worked for the Pontiac dealer in 67, and uh, one of the salesmen and I went to the GM Training Center in Shawnee, Kansas, sometime in April, or sometime in February, and he went to a salesman, one of them went to a salesman's uh, briefing, and I went to the mechanics uh, they call it uh, new car or, uh, indoctrination, so to speak. So anyhow, he and I picked up two Firebirds and drove them back to Manhattan. And I don't remember who, which one was first, but uh, I was either first or second, probably second. Okay, we're going to talk about the Trans Am today, and this is the first Trans Am. This is a 1969 Trans Am, and they made 689 of them. Eight of them were convertibles, four of them were automatic transmission, and four of them had four speeds. This is a, kind of the sport version or the hot rod type, the hot rod car or the muscle car of the Firebirds. This is a 70, it kind of got dressed up a little bit. Uh, the 69 had stripes across the, the hood and the top and the trunk and was white. In 70, they came up with two different combinations there. This is a 71, got dressed up a little bit. You can see the, the little chicken right there on the, the nose of the car. This is a, has the most horsepower to the wheels of any of the Firebirds that were produced. There weren't any real major changes except for the chicken on the hood. Okay, Jason's going to talk. Jason is going to talk about Smokey and the Bandit. 
so for the Smokey and the Bandit, um, very iconic car. Uh, it was featured in Smokey and the Bandit, of course. Um, it made the Trans Am one of the most popular sports cars uh, and idolized the decal on the hood. Um, two other cars featured in Smokey and the Bandit uh, was the 1973 Kenworth 18 wheel driven by Cletus and the Pontiac Le Mans driven by the Sheriff. Now we all know what was in the in the semi. Yeah, Rocky Mountain spring water. Okay, this is a, a 1978 ad. Uh, and it says it all there, a firebird's favorite purpose except standing still. This is our Trans Am. This car is equipped with, with the T-tops. It's got uh, optional rear wheel disc brakes, power disc brakes. Uh, it's got a add-on uh, CB radio. And back in the 70s, anybody that was anybody had a CB radio. If you didn't have a CB, CB radio, you were just, you were out in the cold. 1981, or I'm sorry, 1980, the Trans Am was the official pace car of the Indy 500 race. And it was, <clears throat> it was powered by a 301 Buick V8 engine with uh, a turbo on it. Several of these cars were produced for the race, and uh, also the, the pace car goes to the winner of the race. Uh, in 1980, 79, uh, General Motors started switching engines in their cars, and they got in a lot of hot water putting Chevrolet engines and Oldsmobiles and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Ford Motor Company was smart. They switched engines around too a lot, but they were all Ford Motor Company cars, Ford Motor Company <coughs> engines. So they didn't get in any trouble, but boy, GM sure did when they put the Chevrolet engines in the Oldsmobiles. And they were the same size engine, and a better engine actually than a, a 350 Oldsmobile. Okay, 1982, it changed when they, they changed the front end on it quite a bit, and uh, we had the TV movie, The Night Riders, and Jay Justin's going to talk about them. Uh, the Night Rider was a popular TV show. Um, it had a 305 Chevy engine in it. Uh, the Night Rider was mainly about. Uh, ex cop who uh, got in an accident and uh, he was given a new chance and drives around in his Knight Rider to uh, stop crime. Okay, 1983, have another pace car, only it's for the Daytona 500. nineteen eighty five Trans Am and other manufacturers were forced to uh, come up with some electronics to improve the the emission control and also the gas mileage. So this is a GTA model, the A standing for automatic, it was a five point seven liter engine, is a tuned port fuel injection, it's fully loaded and this car sold for just under twenty thousand dollars. They really, the the car without the GT, without the A, the, just the Trans Am GT, sold for twelve thousand dollars. And this car was nineteen thousand eight hundred and some dollars. Kind of quite a little bit more. Nineteen eighty nine was the twentieth anniversary. This is a, a limited, limited edition Trans Am. A total of 1,500 were produced 
and all the 20th anniversary Trans Ams were white with a camel interior. The engine was a turbocharged 3.8 Buick, Buick engine. And uh, it's kind of hard for a Pontiac lover to swallow when they come up with a Buick engine for the Pontiacs. This car was also the pace car for the Indianapolis 500 race in 1989. In 1991, the Trans Am got a, a real good facelift and a $5,000 price increase. <laughs> and uh, they got the front end changed on it and um, made it more aerodynamic. In 1993, one of the biggest changes was the front bumper, which went to more of a curved and other change was the lowest engine op option being 3.1 instead of a 3.4. They were trying to get better gas mileage. In 1995, the Trans Am was the only rear wheel drive Pontiac produced. As you can see, it's able to smoke the tires. Nineteen ninety nine is the thirtieth anniversary of the of the Pontiac of the Trans Am. And this is a special edition sixteen hundred of them built. I had thousand sixty five coupes and five hundred thirty five convertibles. Body finished with with white with the, the stripes on the side. Thirtieth anniversary, Trans Am was the pace car for the 1999 uh, NASCAR race at Daytona. Here we go. This is a sad ending. This is a, a 2002 Pontiac, and this is the thirtieth, thirty-fifth anniversary of the Firebird. All of them came fully loaded, with the exception of uh, a tape deck. This is a, a sharp nose, kind of hard to judge the distance. Sometimes it got bumped when it wasn't supposed to. There's the interior of the 2002. This is the last. Trans Am it was built, the red one, and it went to a Pontiac collector. So it will be hopefully stored forever in the history. So sad for us Pontiac lovers. Questions, comments? Okay, feel free to get up and wander around and look at the car and if you got any questions, ask, we will try and answer them for you. And any other comments? What, what those Pontiac guys didn't know about that 3.8 turbocharged Buick V6 engine is they could outrun Corvettes with it. You suppose that's, uh, that's not a Pontiac guy talking, is it? <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many Buicks do you have, John? Oh, I think five or six. Five or six. He's got so many, he can't count them all. That 3.2 was a holdover from the G, uh, the uh, Buick. Yeah, they quit making yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Had, uh, the in yeah. or whatever they were using those, and that's the only engines they had left over were a couple thousand. Yeah. Well, you can tell that uh, that John is Buick. His dad worked at the Buick garage for many, many years. He worked next door to me when I was at the Pontiac dealer. Any other comments? Okay, thank you very much for coming.